Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. We have a project to do down the sideline of the shop. This is the back of the shop, an old building, and there's another shop next door, which is actually Christine's shop, and I will take you in there one day. There's a side lane between the two, and I have a bit of a project to do, so come and have a look. Okay, when I moved into this place almost 20 years ago, because the back of the shop here is a residence, this lane was absolutely overgrown with Madeira vine and also blackberries. So it was impenetrable. I could get to about where I am now. I think I could just change the gas bottles, but where that wall is in front of you and where the windows are down that side, it was just a mass of greenery and like a, like a jungle. And you couldn't get through because the blackberries were very spiky and it was really just a waste of space and overgrown. So over time, I gradually pegged it back and chopped it out and found a concrete path under here between the two buildings. And that um, wall up the end was actually just a fixed wall. I've made that into a gate. And the other half of this was actually just soil and it was overgrown with weeds. And this whole side was just full up with vegetation right up to the roof. So I gradually made it accessible and now I've turned it into a lane for outside stuff for the shop. And if you've seen my recent shop tour video, uh, part one actually shows you a little bit down here and you'll see some of the stuff's here because I needed that video about a week ago. So what I did on the soil side is I actually brought some sand in and I just laid pellet boards over the top of the sand just to basically give a... a um, a barrier to stop weeds growing up. I know they're going to rot away and they've actually done three years and even though they're starting to get a little rotten in places it's still quite functional, quite serviceable and I'm pretty happy to get three years out of it. It didn't take long to do. I just basically laid them down side by side and you can see they're lifting a bit in a couple of spots there so they're just about ready to come up. I was really happy to get three years. We might get another year out of them and I'm actually planning to just get some second hand bricks and just pave it and that'll keep it neat and this area will be functional as a an extra sales area. But the project today, I digress, the project today is to put a doorway in here because I'm getting customers come to here and I just had a bit of wood propped up against here because customers would look down the back and say, oh, can we go down there? You know, it's a bit of a, it looks messy to most people. To me, it's, it's a, a store yard that's constantly changing and when you're in the second hand business and you do a lot of scrapping and you clean up people's sheds this is probably a normal type of yard but it's it's all a work in progress um most of the stuff well there's hardly any rubbish at all i process all the rubbish pretty quickly there's a lot of building supplies some scrap metal all sorts of stuff so there i've justified the look of my yard but the whole thing is i don't want customers to want to go out there so i did build this half wall here just out of pellet timber and I had put a pine, treated pine post in halfway, which has worked well. Um, except I've noticed, if you line that up with the window frame, it's quite crooked. Well, you can line it up with the boards on that side. The pole has actually lent back a bit, so I'm going to have to try and straighten that first. But I want to make a doorway to swing off this pole, or maybe swing off the shed side, I'm not too sure which side so that I can basically just close this off from prying eyes and keep this side of the lane between our shops as a, a separate spot where customers can go and they won't be tempted to look down the back and, and fossick amongst my treasures. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and straighten this pole. So the plan I have is to put a chain around the top and maybe anchor the chain back to the end of that heavy bench because I don't think that bench will move and we'll just try and winch the pole up straight now it's not concreted in I just basically dug a hole and compacted the soil with a crowbar and for some reason it's leant back and it's taken a bit of a wall with it but that's fine hopefully we can straighten that up and then we're going to make a gateway or a gate because that is the gateway and we will use totally recycled materials. I've got some large machinery type pellets down the back. We'll see if we can make a rustic old door out of the pellet timber to fill that gap. 
Here's a couple of old long machinery pellets that I picked up from a local business a while back um, and I thought they'd be handy for something one day and that day has come. So they're nice long lengths, I haven't measured them but they're around about 10 foot long, easily long enough for the doorway I'm going to make or the door or the gate, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to knock one of these apart. The timbers appear quite straight and hopefully they'll pry off pretty easily. They're nice and thick and they'll handle the weather for quite a long time. I'm not going to paint it, I want it to look rustic and uh, they should be great. So I'll get, I'll knock one of those apart, I should have enough boards just from one of them and then we'll, we'll cut them to length and we'll try and fashion some sort of gate out of them. That's finished one of the pellets. You can see that some of the boards split on the end. That's the worst one. But I've got plenty of length. I should be able to get enough straight lengths out of that. And I think there'll be enough there. I haven't measured the width yet, but I think there'll be enough there to make a gate. So I haven't actually touched the other one yet. We'll leave that um, resting quietly against the fence, just waiting for the day when that becomes handy, as I'm sure it will. Uh, these are the rails that uh, the other one all the boards were nailed to um, they may just become firewood they're uh, a little bit split and they're very light timber anyone that, that's been working with pallets and trying to reuse old timber like this will know that it's a very cheap timber it's quite light and it's certainly not good quality but um, this isn't structural this is just purely to make a gate which is essentially a, a screen to stop people uh, wanting to go through to my backyard so this should work really well I mentioned before I'm not going to paint it uh, I may oil it or something just to give it a lot bit longer life but it should last for quite a long time anyway uh, it's not like it'll be lying in wet dirt it'll be up on you know basically hanging be able to dry out very well when it gets wet so it should last for quite a long time all right we'll take these back down to the other part of the yard and we'll just make sure we've got enough to do the width of the gate if we need a couple more, I will start pulling a few more boards off that one. Back at this job today, guys. Uh, I've just laid out all those boards and the sum uh, dimensions or width of them all laid together is 42 inches. Let's duck around to the area we're going to put the door. And I measured that up and it's 40 inches. So we've got exactly the right amount of boards. Uh, I might actually make it at... 38 I think so we'll use one less board and then that gives me room to put a bit of trim one end if I need to and it'll obviously fit we can't make it too big now the other thing I've done this morning is I I looked everywhere for the winch that I had and I couldn't find it many of you guys with sheds full of stuff will understand the pain of trying to find something you know you've got but I did have in my shop some nice old Hayes wire strainers and uh they are actually got $120 on them. They're really popular, these things. They work brilliantly, and they sell on eBay for that sort of money. Fortunately, these hadn't sold, and now I can use them. So I've put a bit of chain around that end, and a bit of chain up the top this end, and we have tensioned that up with the wire strainers, and it's pulled the fence up fairly well upright. See, it looks a lot better in line with those boards on that side. Now I'm going to leave the pressure on that for a day or two and I'm going to use the blunt end of a crowbar. You can see it's opened up a bit of a gap at the bottom of the pole there. The ground here is quite wet because we've had a pretty damp year. So if it had been dry I would have soaked it for a few days first or maybe even a week. So I'm just going to pound that with a crowbar. It'll compact the soil against hard against the pole. It may move a little bit more over the next day or two. I'll do it again. And we should have a fairly vertical pole there to build a gate off. Next thing to do now is to lay out these boards. Find a bit of a flat area where I can lay them all out side by side. I will cut them to length. I'll measure the length I need. And then we can just put some cross pieces on the back. And we should have a gate forming. All I have to do then is to find some hinges and work out a way of latching it. Progress report now on the door. I've cut the lengths of timber to six foot. It just seemed like a good size to cut to, which kind of matches up to the wall I've got there. I've clamped them together. I haven't worried 
I haven't clamped them very tightly and I haven't worried too much about the finish on the ends this end is all the uh, natural ends and they're a little bit jagged and manufacturers of pellets never cut the ends perfectly square so if you're going to build things at a pellet timber you do need to square up the ends I haven't worried for this job because I want it sort of rustic looking and that will that will work out fine uh, they're all pretty even I've clamped them up not overly tight and the reasoning there is that they're they're going to move whether they get wet and swell or whether they dry out in the middle of summer and shrink so they're quite damp at the moment they're not actually wet but we have had some showery weather yesterday so they're going to have a reasonably high moisture content which means they will shrink in summer in our hot summer days and it'll open up gaps a bit and then when it gets wet it'll swell again so there's going to be a bit of movement if i clamp them up super tight now then when they get wet and expand a little bit more they will might they might likely buckle so i'm just going to clamp them loosely just to get them lined up i'm going to make uh cut some boards one for the top one to go across the middle and one at the base there as you can see i've found some hinges they don't match but they're a similar size that'll be fine and i've got some timber to do the cross pieces with so that'll be the next step is just to cut the cross pieces i'm not filming any of the actual um work because it's really basically really basic carpentry skills i'm not um i'm ha doing half of it by eye i'm not really worried about measuring i m roughly measured six foot on one board and just use that board to mark all the others so simple carpentry schools anyone can do this and uh now i'll cut some cross pieces and i'll show you what it looks like when they're ready cross pieces have been cut and attached as you can see it's starting to look like a door now uh, i put plenty of screws in i put uh, top and bottom I put doubles just to stop the boards cupping and then just a single along there so I put plenty of screws in I had I had a whole box lot come out of a shed so it's not like it's cost me anything um, I did drill the timber first and then the screws are quite long they go right pretty well right into the meat of the main door so uh, that's all finished it will actually work as a door just like that but I'm just going to put some angled bracing on it the uh, the last timber piece we didn't use I'll just cut it and angle it one across there and one across there and that'll really give a look of of a nice old um, timber door uh, very common sort of construction that we see on the outback dunny doors in Australia uh, I don't know what you'd call them overseas I think privies wasn't it privy for an outside toilet but quite often the doors on the old um, outdoor toilets in the outback were just made out of planks of wood uh, pretty well constructed the same way as this so it's going to be a nice look the construction part will be at the back I'm almost tempted to put this side uh, facing down the lane so customers get to look at you know a nice old dunny door type construction but I think I'll put it the other way uh, as I said it's this whole project is really just to screen off the side lane so I'll just cut work out some angles cut that piece I'll screw that on as well the door will then be complete and we'll just look at mounting it where it has to go there we go how cool is that look I reckon that's really good it's come up nice and strong solid it's probably going to weigh a little bit but uh, I should be able to move it all right and this is really easy to do I've used minimal tools you do not need a, a table saw a, a drop saw or a specialized workshop for working with timber I've just done this on a little outdoor table in the backyard of my shop uh, just free timber from a pallet basically just used a handsaw a cordless drill a really old square that I actually got out of the shop and a tape measure which I only really roughly measured I could have guessed six foot I didn't use the tape measure for anything else I just basically laid the timber on there did it by eye screwed it together and it's come up great so you don't need specialized tools you just need a little bit of motivation and how cool would one of these look maybe in your garden as a cut in half as a gate um, I'm thinking I will probably splash some oil over it now old school methods would probably to be painted with sump oil which actually really does preserve the timber well it only tends to be a bit dirty for the first few weeks and after that it takes on a really nice look and the beauty of using old sump oil is that you know I don't know if it's actually would sit right with the greenies but it's look a lot of the old farmers did it with fence posts and sheep yards and the timber would last for decades 
and it keeps the uh, termites or anything out of the timber as well so I don't know if there's an actual ruling on doing that but I know a lot of old farmers that used to do it and uh, it does really keep the timber well when you're outside for this one though I actually have a, a remains of a can of decking oil in my shed which came out of someone else's shed and I'll just splash that over here it'll give this door quite a long life just keep the moisture out of it it will stop it swelling and shrinking quite as much so there we go I've just got to work out how to hang it we'll do that next and the door is all finished as you can see it uh, looks pretty awesome there come and I'll show you how I finished it off I kept things pretty simple all I did was just run one board along the old building there I just screwed into the the um, the noggins in the wall so it doesn't need to be super strong and this door isn't a security feature as I said at the start it's only really just a screening I found a nice old pad bolt here so that's all we need stop the people from the other side from this side which is the public area where they come through from the front there and it allows them to come down to the, my side lane browse all my goodies and we'll just step back whoops nearly tripped over and there we go that's how it looks a couple of dice old hinges really work well I'm loving the look of the old pellet timber I might uh, as I said I might splash some deck all over it but in reality it's going to last for quite a few years and you know the door actually only took probably just a bit over an hour to knock together most of that time was just putting screws in so it's going to take me nearly an hour to round up the oil and to paint it so if I get five years out of that probably a lot more actually um, I don't think I'll worry about the deck oil I think I'll just leave it in natural oil and see how it goes these boards this wall on the other side I built that um, just over three years ago and those boards still look like they've got a lot of years left in them and they weren't treated or painted with anything so I'll probably leave it how it is uh, but it serves the purpose perfectly it screens out my backyard it creates a nice little area that's a little bit echoey here and in fact I think you can probably hear some kids in the background schools just finished for the day but there we go happy with that little project that's how you can turn some scrap timber into a functional door or cut it in half and make it a nice feature gate in your garden uh, hopefully I've inspired you to have a go absolutely zero cost uh, I had everything I needed for this job so there we go thanks for watching I'll catch you in the next video bye